Thank you, Mariana. Uh, next up is Sarah Gallagher. Kia ora koutou. Um, 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 yeah, there's going to be a few giggles in this, hopefully. Um, my name's Sarah Gallagher. I work at the University of Otago, but this is a personal project. Um, it's, it's actually been an all-consuming collection that is... Um, it's I just realised it's taken up over a quarter of my life. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I'm quite excited about sharing it with you today. Um, and I think that it's worth doing because it depicts a unique and ephemeral expression of student culture in Dunedin. Uh, Dunedin, hopefully most of you will know Dunedin. I know we've got some people from overseas. Um, Dunedin has our oldest university and a campus environment like no other in New Zealand. Um, it sits within the suburb of uh, North Dunedin which is the largest rental area in New Zealand. And uh, the majority of our students come from out of town, so it's a hotbed for lots of liminal activity. <laughs> okay. Now, um, the Dunedin Flat Names Project is a collection of names that have been painted, drawn, stenciled, spray painted onto various objects and then attached to houses or fences. They could be made of bits of board, fence palings, bare boxes, headboards, surfboards, whiteboards, and skateboards. <laughs> They're flats with names like the cock and swallow, <laughs> libido's bar and grill, foot rot flats, hogwarts, the shrieking shack, the changing rooms, Hyde Street RSA, the Hilton, Bedrock, Sifter Rosa, The Lodge. Uh, some of you might have remembered um, the DSIR being mentioned earlier today in a talk. This is not the same DSIR. This is the Department of Student Inebriation Research. <laughs> the Jolly Roger, the Brick Shit House, the Heap, the Manor, the Wardrobe, Bonnie Doon, Beaver Lodge, the Greasy Beaver Lodge, the muffin, and as you can see here, the beehive. Now, um, take note of that photo, because, notice anything different? The sign has changed. So sometimes the signs change, um, and the names will often stay the same. And I'll come back to that a bit later. So named flats are ever present in Dunedin. Largely they follow the season of the academic year, but there are some that have taken root and there are several that have been around for quite some time. Now, this started out as a very analogue project for my Masters of Library and Info Studies, while so I was um, learning from Sydney Shep, who's here. And it grew from a collection of photos taken on a Pentax ME Super, with me wandering around the streets with a paper map in my hand, to a digital camera, smartphone and Facebook community through which I started collecting stories and creating a context for this ragtag bunch of flats. And it also involved researching the collections of libraries and archives, conducting personal interviews, and surveying the Facebook community. So my objective is to create an environment to house the photos, stories, and context around these flats long after they've gone. But this has had its difficulties. And the main challenges have been the ever-present, or the ever-changing digital environment and trying to find a thing that meets all these needs. So it's been really good to hear about linked data. Um, I adopted some tools early on, you know, getting all excited, bright, shiny thing, Flickr, bright, shiny thing, Facebook, bright, shiny thing, Google Maps, and have tried them out. Um, and obviously these have changed over time and that has caused me some hassle. Um, this slide gives you some idea of the size of the problem. Um, this is not all the flats but this is a large number of, of the flats. Um, and it represents my attempt to use Google Maps to plot the locations of the name flats over time and then link these to images of Flickr, which then had a taxonomy attached to them, which then would link into the Facebook community where people would be talking about them. So it's not ideal and it's a bit messy. 
um, and I'm still looking for the perfect solution. So now I want you to imagine that you're a new student to Dunedin and you might be a first year student like I was in 1991 who moved to town, didn't know anybody and you move into a flat and you name it because it seems like a cool thing to do and it's a nice way to get to know these people that you're living with who you don't know. Um, and you kind of do it subconsciously too because it's part of your environment and you're walking past these named flats every day as you're walking down Castle Street or Leith Street or House, um, House Street or Hyde. And you just don't, you don't know how long this has been going on for. And you don't know that this has been going on since before you were born or since you, before your parents were born and your grandparents and maybe even your great grandparents. The oldest flat I've come across was from the 1930s. It was a bunch of divinity students, along with some trainee doctors, dentists and teachers, who couldn't afford to live in halls of residence, and they didn't want to live with landladies because they were mean. So what they did was they clubbed together their money, and for 17 shillings a week, they could afford to rent a house and a housekeeper. She did the dishes, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, according to one of the original batchites who I've corresponded with, um, there were only two rules at the batch. You had to be poor and you had to piss straight. <laughs> so they created a home. <laughs> that was a direct quote, by the way. Um, <laughs> uh, they created a home. The flat had a name, a name board, a photo album, and a visitor's book, and these things can be seen in the Presbyterian Archive in Dunedin. A trench for graduation, they had traditions and evening, evening prayers. They also had letterhead. And this is an example of it. So they went to the trouble, this place meant so much to them that they created a crest, uh, a motto in Greek, which translates because of poverty. Okay, now um, I'm going to jump forward 30 years now to the 1960s, and this is Smirsh HQ, and again, um, these are all medical students, and I've corresponded with, um, with one of them who has supplied the photos, and is very happy for me to use them however I want. Um, now Smirsh, um, and, and he and I have both checked out the uh, validity of the name on the letterbox, and it is indeed Smirsh HQ. And um, this was named after the KGB headquarters from the then very popular Ian Fleming James Bond books. Um, these guys were really sneaky and they managed to get their phone number in the, um, in the phone book under Smirsh Harold Quentin. <laughs> okay, 30 years later, 1997 in Dunedin, 96ZM ran a competition for people to name their flats and this started a flurry of activity in, in the student um, area. And Mose was born as part of this renaissance of flat naming. This isn't the original Mose sign. Mose had quite a few. Um, but Mo, Mose took advantage of the then um, newly available um, phone name numbers that were available through telecom and this number is listed in the um, university student phone book of the time. Mose, like Smirsh, um, was also influenced by popular culture of the time. So Mose, it was supposed to be flaming Mose, but they never got around to putting the flaming on the sign, um, named after the bar and the Simpsons. Okay, uh, this is another, flat, um, another shot of Mose. It's looking a bit ragged now. And I was going to tell you that this is the latest sign of Mose, and I particularly like it because it's on a yellow skateboard like Bart's. But um, as I drove past at half past five this morning, um, no, there's a new sign. Yeah. Uh, so um, Mose is, is really interesting because it's a, like the beehive, it's one of these really resilient flats that's been around for ages, and the landlords take the sign down, cutlers, the property agent, take the sign down and it comes back. It's become a legend. People know that 89 Clyde Street is Mose with or without the sign. 
um, the guy from the property agent told me that the students don't even know, you know, they don't even know what their address is. They come in to pay their rent and they say, oh, I'm at Moe's. <laughs> yeah. Well, can I rent, can I rent Moe's next year? Yeah. So flats like the Beehive and Moe's have become legends. They are sought after because students want to live somewhere with a meaning. They want a home. They want an identity. And they want to be part of the Dunedin story. And I think this is really the heart of this project. It's not, it's, it's become more than just preserving an ephemeral print culture in Dunedin. It's become, um, it's become about identity and about belonging. So to conclude, I just want to show you this image. It's an illustration from the Orientation magazine of 2010. And it depicts the intersection of Frederick and Clyde Streets. And for those of you that know Dunedin, you'll notice that there's something not quite right about it. And this really, um, this sums up for me what naming flats and creating homes is all about. And what's interesting about this scene is that it's an imagined landscape. It's cobbled together from a collection of very well-known flats from Clyde Street, Dundas Street and Hyde Street. The yellow flat is called 27 Steps to Heaven. Apparently there was a brothel there at one point, I don't know. Um, the one with the pink door is the legendary pink flat the door, which um, was born in 1984. Uh, and the one to the left of that is the Hyde Street RSA. Now I spoke with the designer of this image and um, asked her about it. And she said that it was created more for the parents of the students than for the students themselves. And I thought about that and I thought, maybe this is to welcome them back home. Thank you. <laughs>